guys, I'm doing a tutorial uh, with an image from Julia Sperry today. All of the links are down in the description if you'd like to purchase the image or know where to find it. So I'll pop that in the description there for you. I'm going to be using Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils today and I do have a white Prismacolor pencil that I will go over some of that with. I'm use I've got a fine liner as well which I use on the eyelashes there and I've used in the background uh, ink tense uh, watercolor pencil so any type of watercolor I've just used there um, in the background. So the paper I'm using is just a Canson brand of uh, paper just white craft paper it is and I've just printed on that uh, in a grayscale line so that it wasn't too uh, harsh for the picture. So I'm coming in now and I'm going to be doing the skin first. So the first color I'm using here is Burnt Sienna and I'm just coming in and doing all of the shadow areas with this. So I'm going to go uh, everywhere where there's a shadow leaning over the face or where there's a facial feature that would create a shadow. So I'm just going to pop in and do that now. And I'm just doing a really light pressure to start with. So I'm just going to swap over now and I'm going to go over the darker color with the next color which is cinnamon and I'm just going to go over the top of those colors and bring them a little further out into the skin a bit more. Um, so I'm just doing a light pressure again over the top of the previous color and um, just bringing that a little bit further out into the white area there. So I'm swapping over to medium flesh now and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. So all I'm doing is using a light pressure and I'm bringing the color further out towards the white area. So we're just creating a nice smooth transition between the colors. So I'm going over the top of the previous color and just bringing it a little bit further out. So I am doing light pressure still. I'll come in with a second layer and do a firmer pressure in a moment. So I'm swapping over to light flesh and I'm going to do exactly the same thing there. So just coming a little bit further out towards that highlight area. Now this will be mainly done over the rest of the skin now. I do have ivory to bring, bring back over it, um, but that'll just put the yellow tones through that. So I'll just probably go over the, the whole face and skin with the ivory after I've done light flesh. So I'm just popping that light flesh in all over and over the top of the previous colors as well. So I've just changed over to ivory and I'm going to do over the entire area with this color. So I'm bringing in that yellow tone over the top of all of the previous colors and I'm just doing this nice and light still. So now I'm going to swap out to white. 
Now my um, coloring here was quite smooth so I've decided to put firm pressure on here with the white uh, Prismacolor pencil. The reason I'm using Prismacolor is it's a lot softer and it helps to blend in the polychromos a lot better. So I'm just popping in with that white and I'm just going over the top of all of those areas and I'll come in and I'll deepen up a couple of areas with other colors after I've done this. So just putting high pressure on now, making it look nice and smooth. So I'm going to bring some cinnamon back in and I'm just going to darken up some of those shadow areas with it. So I'm just going over the top of the previous white and I'm just putting in a little bit more pressure here just to get a little bit darker in those shadow areas. We've got some dark flesh there again and I'm just going over the top of that again. So because the paper's slightly burnish, I'm not getting a lot of colour on there but I'm still putting some colour in. So I'm going over that now and I'm just putting in some blush for the cheeks. And just uh, pushing high pressure here just to get that colour in and around the shadow areas again. To blend the areas in that I've just redone with the white pencil.
I like to try and keep the background clean but sometimes the uh, pencil does uh, shave off a little bit and you do rub it onto the uh, outside of the image so I'm just using an eraser just to rub this off and a duster to get rid of the other pencil dust there so that would be the skin done now you can go a little bit darker if you'd like so you can do uh, more layers on that to get uh, more shadows and things like that but I've just left mine as it is I'm just coming in with a I've just got a sharpie fine liner there and I'm just going in to mark out the eyelashes on her face so they're actually the biggest feature on her face that I wanted to stand out so I've just done this black uh, to fill that in now So I've got some dark thaleo green there and I'm just going to go in and mark out all of the lines on the veil with this one. So bringing it over the top of the skin where it overlaps the skin as well. So I'm just going to put a fairly high pressure here just to get that uh, over the top of the skin color as well. So I'm going to blend that out with light thaleo green and I'm just going to put firm pressure on the edge parts here a bit and over the skin there just a lighter pressure. I do need to put a little bit of pressure though because the color pigment needs to come off onto the skin there. This is where the white pencil was really good because I can still add a little bit over the top of that. So I'm coming in now and I'm just blending all of that out with the white pencil. So I've kind of put a bit of a smudge over the skin so it still looks like the veil is covering it um, without compromising the color of the skin too much. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to line all of the vines on coming off the flower hat there and on her dress. So all of those I'm going to do the same colors I've just done. So we'll use dark thaleo green on the, the uh, darker areas and then I'm going to fill in the middle of the leaves with a light thaleo green. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So now that I've done that, I've come in and I've lined this flower. So all I've done is put a the middle cadmium red over uh, all of the lines on this flower. And what I'm doing now is just lightly bringing that color out a little bit. So I've done it really firm on the edges. And then I've just put brought the pencil in a little bit lighter and released that pressure a little bit as I've come further out. So that's all I'm doing on this flower. I've lined it and now I'm just using that pencil nice and lightly just to create uh, some shape and shadow into uh, the color and to 
to give a little bit more of a graduation between the colors as I bring them in to blend them. So I'm doing higher pressure around the edges and then I'm doing lighter pressure as I come in. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to bring in Scarlet Red and I'm going to go over the top of the previous color and bring this a little bit further out. So I might have firm pressure in the shadow areas where I've done the lining and then I'll bring that uh, pressure up a little bit and make it a little bit less firm as I come out. So doing the same thing as I did on the previous layer but I'm just bringing this further out in towards the middle of the flower there. So now I've got light cadmium red and I'm doing exactly the same thing. So I'm going to go over with firm pressure on the outsides and then bring lighter pressure towards the middle of it. So I'll just go ahead and line or put this in now. So just going over the previous areas we've already done with heavy pressure and then lightening up that pressure as I come out.
So now I've swapped out that uh, light cadmium red and I've added some dark cadmium orange now. So I'm just bringing this further out towards the highlight area. I'm trying to put a little bit of orange tone through it and I will come back in later on um, and put a little bit of yellow tone into it as well. So for now I'm just popping this in with high pressure on the edge parts again and I'm bringing this further in towards the lighter area just and releasing that pressure as I come further out. So I just brought that back in and just lightly went over all of the highlight areas with it to put a bit of color in through there. Now I'm going to blend that out with the white uh, Prismacolor pencil. So it will blend out quite smoothly and it's going to look uh, a lot lighter than it does without the white. So I'm just popping that into the highlight areas and bringing it out towards the uh, darker shadow areas as well. So I'm just coming in with that middle cadmium red and I'm just deepening up the shadow areas with that just because the white pencil did wash it out a little bit and I want to make sure you can see the creases in the flower so I'm just going back over the top of that again. I'm just getting rid of the dust off the edge of the dress and the, and the side of the background there. So it's starting to look nice and deep and the shadows are starting to really stand out.
So I'm going to put some uh, dark chrome yellow into the middle of the flower. So I'm putting it on the white spots that was it, were inside of the flower there. And I'm also lining the lines inside that as well. So I'm doing that now with high pressure. I'm blending that out now with light cardamom yellow and I'm just putting that firmer pressure in and doing it over the rest of the flower there. I've just left little slithers of white which I'm going to blend out with the white pencil now. I'm just going to do this little flower on the side here exactly the same colors so I've got that middle cadmium red and I'm just showing the lines of this and I've just brought a little bit further out um, with a little bit of lighter pressure and I'm going over that now with the scarlet red now I'm going to blend that out with light cadmium red and then I'm just going to blend the tip of that with the white pencil there and over the top of the previous colors so we've got some nice shadow and highlight areas on that little flower there. Just going back over it now with the middle cadmium red just to deepen up the shadow areas. And I've also just got the scarlet red there as well just to bring that a bit further out. So I'm going to start on the large flower on top of her head now. So I'm doing the middle cadmium red and I'm going to do all of the lines on this and I'm going to create some crease lines as well with it.
To now come and line this image, I'm going to come in now and make it uh, the layer easier to blend. So I'll just bring it a little bit closer for you and just show you what I mean. So what I'm doing is high pressure and then as I come further out towards the highlighted area there, you can see that I'm releasing the pressure. So you can now see there's tooth there. Whereas in the part where I've put high pressure, there's no tooth left on the paper. And now that I've come a little bit further out, you can see that there's white gaps in that. So what will happen next is when I put the next color on, that color will fill out those white gaps. And then I'll do exactly the same with that color. So I'll bring it a bit further out so that I can blend that nice and easy. So now I'm bringing in that scarlet red and I'm coming over the top of that and I'm also doing higher pressure over the part that had tooth still. So now I'm filling that gap in so that you can see that that is now blended in. now I'm just going to do this little section here. I'm going to add that light cadmium red and I'm just going to blend that a little bit further out. And I've got some dark cadmium orange and I'm going to bring that a little bit further out towards that area there at the top. 
And on the lines that are coming down, I'm just going to go over the top of these with this as well. So just go over the top, still leaving a few white gaps in between. I'm going to blend that out with dark chrome yellow now. Now not every single petal on the on the flower is going to be exactly the same. So the next petal I might do slightly darker or slightly light, lighter um, depending on, you know, how I'm feeling at the time. Um, so I'm bringing light chrome yellow now. I'm just going over the top of all of the colour now. Just with high pressure, just blending that in over the top of everything. So we can still see the little white highlights on there. Now here the uh, shadow area there with the dark cadmium is quite dark. So I do try to just lighten that up and blend that in a little bit there with the white as well. So I'm actually quite happy with that. So I'm going to go over all of the petals very, very similar. And I'm going to um, do exactly the same thing that I've done. So I've started here now with the middle cadmium red. And I'm just uh, increasing the shadow areas on the one I've already done. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to start filling out the rest of them. Now you notice that I've added some lines at the top of the petals as well. Just to uh, show that they would be curved or bent over. So that might be slightly darker there. So I've just done that as well. I've done the same color blend on the side here and you can see there that's blended nicely. Um, now on, you probably can't see it very well on the camera there, but some of the dust has gone on to the background and it's, I've smudged it in. So I'm going to rub that off with my eraser. Um, but I do bring in a piece of white paper just to sit on top of that for my hand to sit on so that I don't smudge the remainder of that. Because that dark cadmium is a darker color and um, I haven't filled out all of the tooth on that, the pencil still is, the pigment in it is still easy to move. So every time I move my hand over it, I do smudge that. That. So I've just popped a bit of white paper there just to cover that while I'm doing it. So now I'm just filling out the little pieces of the flower there that are sticking out of the top. I wanted to fill them in first before I went over it with the red just to make sure that was done there. And I've used the dark thaleo green and the light thaleo green. And I'm going to use some yellows in the top parts there just to have them show out. So I've got light cadmium yellow. sharpening it there and I'll just come in and uh, pop those in 
going to put a little bit of the darker chrome yellow in there as well just to um, put some shadow in there and make them stand out a little bit. I'm just going back over the top. Just finishing that off with some light yellow glaze. So just over the top of all of that. Just got Scarlet Red again there and I'm just going to blend a little bit further out towards the highlight area and I'm going over the little lines at the top of the flower as well. going to blend that out with that light cadmium red Then I've got dark cadmium orange and I'm just going over that again and blending it further out. So on the petal that I've already done there, I've just sort of re-gone over the colours just to deepen them up. And then I've got my dark chrome yellow and I'm just going over the top of all of that. I've left a little gap there for the next colour which was a light chrome yellow. I'm just going over the top of the entire area with this now. So that back petal is a little bit darker than the others because it is sitting behind. Just going over the top of that with white and just blending that out to nice and smooth. So I've come back to the scarlet red and I'm just blending this next petal out. Then I've got some light cadmium red and I'm just going over the top of that again and I'm just bringing this further up to the top of the flower. dark cadmium orange and I'm just going over the top of that again just leaving a small gap for the yellow colors to come in now I've got that dark chrome yellow and I'm bringing that almost over the entire area now just a little bit lighter in those highlight areas just to put in that light chrome yellow over the top so I've got the light chrome yellow and I'm just going over the entire area and then I'll blend this out again with white
just got a blending stub there with a little bit of solvent on it and I'm just uh, making sure this is nice and smooth it's kind of removing some of the dusty pigment off it as well which um, helps with not smudging it later on So I'm just going to show you another way that you can blend in uh, the pencils. So I'm just doing this bottom middle uh, one here and all I'm actually doing is I'm just using exactly the same colors as we did previously but this time I'm just going to do light pressure on all of them all the way through. So it's like marking in where I'm actually going to put the colors. So just uh, with lighter pressure I'm going to fill out from the darkest to the lightest again. Uh, so we started with that dark cadmium red and we just, sorry, the middle cadmium red and then we're just going to bring those colors further out. So I'm just going to do it this time light pressure. So I'll show you what we're going to do then. So now I've done the whole petal light pressure. I'm going to go over with that blending stuff with the uh, solvent on it and I'm just going to blend out those areas a little bit more. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to come back over the top starting from the darkest to lightest again. So what we've actually done is uh, we've created our first layer which shows us where we're going to fill in those colors and then we're coming in with that second layer just to darken it up. So now I'm going in with firm pressure and I'm putting in all of those colors with firm pressure.
So we're coming in with our light chrome yellow now and finishing it off and I'm going to blend it out with white. So it looks exactly the same as the previous petals, it's just I've done it a different way. So there are lots of different ways that you can blend out those those pencils. It depends on what type you're using as well. You might prefer to do it the way I've just done it rather than the other um, or prefer to go back and just do the one layer. Just got that middle cadmium red again and I'm just uh, now coming in and starting all of the lower petals. So I'll just move along here and do that. So it's exactly the same as the previous colors. So I'm not going to come back in and um, let you know when I'm swapping colors. I will come in just near the end of it because we're going to use a couple of different colors just to deepen those shadow areas. So I'm just going to move along and uh, we'll just complete this at the bottom part of this flower. So as I'm just filling this out now, I just want to let you know that I did do the top of the dress with the same colours as we've done with the green vines and the leaves. I've just done them dark thaleo green and light thaleo green and I've just blended that out with some white. So on the front and the top of the dress there, I have filled that out with those colours and um, I have just made sure that I've left highlight areas for the parts of the dress that would have been... Uh, lighter and higher than the back parts of the dress and I have that made them darker so that's all I've done with the top of the dress there and after I finish this flower I am going to move on to the bottom of the dress
I'm just coming in now and deepening up the colors of the flower. I've got some black there and I'm just going to go around the shadow areas and around all of the flowers. Um, shadows so just coming in and shaping and redefining all the shadows with the black just going to put a little bit more green in there to deepen that up a little bit too so I'm just going to move ahead and do all of the shadow areas now of the flower with this black and I'm using the Prismacolor black because it's a little bit smoother and it's easier to go over that even though the paper has been burnished so I'm just going ahead to do that now So now I've done that with the black, I'm going to come over it with dark red and I'm just going to smooth it out so that it doesn't look just defined as black. So we're just going to go over the top of this and really just smudging that out a little bit just to make it a little bit smoother and uh, less, uh, less like a defined line. So we're trying to sort of blend it in a little bit with the rest of the flower. So I'm just going over the top of it and blending it further out there. So you can see that the parts I've done are already looking kind of smudged and smooth, whereas what I haven't done looks like a defined line. So I'm going to go around now and try and smooth that out. And I'm just going to bring in that blending stub again and just re-go over that. So just uh, smudging it on, uh, making sure it's nice and smooth there so that it's all nice and blended. That will be the top of our flower done then.
I've moved on to the bottom of the dress now and I'm going to use the same techniques that I used on the top uh, flowers and the bottom flower there. So I'm using uh, a halo turquoise here and I'm just going in and I'm lining all the edges and putting a little bit of shade uh, out towards that highlight area again. So I'm doing all the lines and the shadow lines there and then just going a little bit further out uh, so I can uh, blend that in with the next color nicely. So I'm going to do that all over the dress with this color.
So you can see how I've gone around all of the flowers there as well, um, put in those shadow areas. And you can see where I've put firm pressure on and where I've uh, lightened up my pressure and brought that further out towards that highlight area. Now this was so that I could uh, blend in the next color. So the next color I'm bringing in now is cobalt turquoise and I'm just bringing this over the previous area and coming a little bit further out towards the highlight area. You can see I covered up most of the highlight with that previous color but now I'm going to put some high pressure on with this cobalt green and bring this from the shadow areas out towards it. So I wanted to have the 
turquoise green behind it the cobalt because I want the most of the dress to be that color so I'm just bringing in the cobalt green now just to blend that out a little bit further now so I'm starting from the shadow areas and coming out towards where the highlight areas would be and I'm just going to go all over the dress and do that now
Now I've got light cobalt turquoise and I'm just going over the remaining uh, highlighted areas with this. So going in firmly around the shadow areas and bringing this all the way over the rest of the area. So this will be completely covered in with this now. I'm still doing a lighter pressure into the middle because I am going to blend this out with some white. So now I'm just bringing in the white and I'm just going over that highlight section and just using this to go out towards the shadow area now. So I'm just blending it in all nice and smooth. So I've still got some highlighted areas on the dress and I've still got some shadow areas. Just use some black Prismacolor pencil just to pop a few dots on the dress and just to draw out that uh, middle part of the flower there in the middle of the dress. I'm just using a blending stub with some uh, solvent just on it to smooth out the colour that I've just done and to make sure that that's all blended in nicely.
So I've just added a few more black spots on there just to um, darken them up a little bit and just put a little bit more detail in there. I've just got some dark cadmium yellow and I'm just putting a little bit of yellow tones back into this flower down the bottom. So because we just blended over it with the white, we didn't actually put any yellow tone into it. I'm just going to put that in now. So now I'm going to start my red blends down on these bottom flowers as well. So I'm using that middle cadmium red just to line these flowers that I'm going to do red first. I am going to do the other flowers that are different shape to these ones a different color. So I'm going to do them yellow orange. So I'm going to use some dark cadmium orange and I'm going to do the middle section of all of these flowers and also do the shadow areas with it as well. So I'm just going to pop in the lines first and then go in and do some shadow areas.
Now I'm going to blend out the red flowers with some scarlet red. on those yellow flowers I'm just going to blend that with dark chrome yellow so I'm just going ahead and doing some shadow areas um, I will come back in with the cadmium orange again just to darken up those shadow areas as well dark chrome yellow I'm just going to blend those yellow flowers out a little bit further I've just got dark cadmium orange again I just decided that we needed some more veins coming in from these yellow flowers so I've just come in to uh, add some veins into the petals with it and just some lines going down into the, towards the middle so it will give the illusion that there's a little bit of a dip or a bend in the petal there so I'm just going to go ahead and pop those in now and then I'm going to blend them out with the previous colors again
So now I've filled majority of those flowers in with that dark chrome yellow and I'm going to come in with light chrome yellow and I'm just going to fill out the remaining highlight area. I am going to use some white to go over those really highlighted spots in the middle of those larger petals there. So I have just done lightly in between those. So I'm going along now and I'm just filling the rest of those flowers out and I'm going to blend them out with white. Got some dark cadmium orange and I'm just going into the shadow areas of these bottom flowers. I'm going to blend that out with dark chrome yellow and then I've got dark cadmium yellow. I'm going to go over all of that with some white then. Now I'm just going back into the flowers at the bottom of the dress here. I did not fill out the bottom flower here, so I'm just filling that in now. So I'm going to keep blending this out further to the lightest color again. So I'm going to go next to scarlet red and blend out um, the rest of the flowers with that. And I've got some light cadmium red and I'm going over the top of that again. some dark cadmium orange and I'm coming over the remainder of I'm coming over the previous darker areas and bringing that over the remainder of it and I'm just leaving a small gap still in the middle to add a little bit more color where we'll put some highlight color in so I'm just doing that now so you can see that I've left white gaps there that is for the highlight colors Now I'm just blending over that entire area there with some dark chrome yellow and I'm still leaving a slight little gap on the edge there.
blend that out with some dark cadmium yellow. So I'm putting high pressure now on those shadow areas to get this colour onto that. So I use that previous yellow just lightly over those really highlighted areas. Now I'm coming in with a white pencil and I'm just blending that out nicely. Just brightening up the highlight areas and blending the colour in. just blending out those yellow flowers as well just to smooth them out a little bit so we're going to start the background in a sec uh, I just want to make sure that I've got no pencil dust on the outside there so I'll use the eraser if there is any but then I'm going to come in with some watercolor pencils so what I've actually got here is a it's a brush that holds just clear water um, it does wet the page there and all I'm going to do is with my derwent pencils I've got sherbet lemon and I've got leaf green and I'm just rubbing the brush onto the pencil leads. So I've just got it there and I'm just dabbing that on. Now this brush is quite little, so we'll change it over for a bigger brush in a sec. I just wanted to show you how, what I was going to do. So all I'm going to do is just randomly dab this on around the image. Um, so I'm going to do the yellow first all around and then I'll fill in the rest of it with green once I'm done. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill out the yellow. So I've got sherbet lemon here. So the page is quite wet, um, just spreading that water around, no, no particular pattern, it's not even, I'm just doing it all over the picture. Now the paper does buckle a little bit, so you may have to, once it's dry, put it underneath a heavy book or something just to keep it nice and flat. So I'm bringing in that leaf, actually it's teal green, I do apologise, it's not leaf green, it's teal green. So I'm just coming over with that now and just spreading that into the areas that I didn't do with the yellow. So I'm going over the top of a bit of the yellow as well and just filling this in now. So once I do, do this, I'll let it dry and then I'll flatten it out a little bit with a book or put it inside a frame which will keep it flat for a, for a while. Um, and then my pitch is done. You could uh, not do the background, cut it, the image out, put it on a card or whatever you'd like to do with it. Um, I don't actually make cards, so I'm just going to leave it as a pretty image to put in a frame later on. So that's my um, version of Julia Spiri's image flower dress. Um, as I said, all of the details for uh, where to get this from and all the other details on 
all of her other things there are in the description as well. So hopefully you did uh, enjoy this tutorial today and um, thanks again. So guys, that's the end of our pencil tutorial today. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again to Julia Sperry for this beautiful image. Um, as I said, all of the details are in the description below. I have put the colors that I used in my blog, which I've also put the link to in my description below. So thanks again, guys. Hopefully I'll see some of you in our Facebook group and um, next video will be uploaded soon. See ya.